This is Amelia and I'll be giving voice to this tutorial by Wada Pinos, who is going to be your teacher. Do you like celebrating St. Patrick's Day, drinking beer, wearing green? I must confess I love it. Leprechauns are characteristic of this celebration. That's why we're going to create our own lepre leprechaun in this tutorial. We'll also include the beer next to this creature. So, Turn on your St. Patrick's Mead and let's start illustrating. First of all, go to Photoshop and open up an empty canvas. If you prefer, you can make your drawing in the traditional way. So first, we are going to sketch our character. Make three sketches and later we'll pick one of them. So start by inserting the basic geometric shapes and action lines. Leprechauns are chubby characters and have big heads and small or big feet, depending on the style or you want to represent. Guys, she's a hilarious and fun pose, so they are having a lot of fun. So, make sure these feelings are reflected on, the, on his facial and body expression. So, what is typical about leprechauns' clothes? They usually wear a really big hat and suit with a jacket, a pair of knee-length trousers, and a pair of striped pantyhose. We'll color all these items green, since green represents St. Patrick's Day. Guys, don't forget the beer! So, bear in mind that the paste must be drawn paying attention to the paint. Okay, so, in this second sketch, I draw a huge beer, since leprechauns are supposed to be very short. So, I draw him leaning on the pins. This way will create a quite fun illustration. These are just the sketches, so you don't focus on including many details. It's just a sketch and don't need to be finished. This step is simply about brainstorming so that later we can select the one we prefer and improve it for the final presentation. Play around with different body types. A chubby leprechaun, another thinner. Also with bigger or smaller heads, experiment as well with different feet and hand size. Don't forget to include bird, which is also a characteristic feature of leprechauns. They don't wear moustache. Instead, they wear a sort of goatee under the inferior lip. Their eyebrows are quite thick and their uh, hair is ginger. However, you can opt for grey or white hair if you want to create an old leprechaun. It's entirely up to you. Once you finish the three sketches, pick the one you like the most and copy it in a new canvas in portrait format. Since the composition is entirely vertical, in order to make the most of the available space. In case you are working with a hand drawn illustration, you can make the sketch bigger or increase the size and print it. In this case, we'll be working with a dig digital software and digital tools. So guys, reduce the opacity of the sketch and create a new layer where we are going to draw again our character using the sketch as a guide and trying to include more details. This way it will be easier to add color and lighting effects later on. We won't be outlining the drawing this time, instead we'll use colors and volumes to de delimit areas. Take all the time you need to develop your character. Don't forget to add details, but don't get obsessed with a perfect final drawing, because later we'll use colors to finish off our illustration. However, you need to be really clear about those areas where volumes would be included, so it's easier for us to color it afterward. You'll find millions of references about Leprechaun on the under characteristics on the internet. As I mentioned before, 
These are the typical clothes worn by leprechauns. However, there, there may be different features, for example, in the vest, trousers, and so on. That's why I highly recommend you to look for lots of references and leprechauns images so that you can choose those elements you like the most and include them in your drawing. Regarding the beer, I'll give you two tips for drawing it. It's desirable that the beer has foam, so make sure you generously include the beer head in your drawing. You can draw a glass or a paint with a lot of foam coming out of the beer. It's a quite important feature as so we can relate it with beer. So now you can modify any aspect so the car character is exactly as you want it to be. In my case, I'll change the nose. Instead of a sharp nose, I'll draw a turn tap one, since, since it's more characteristics of elf's facial features. Great, this is what I'm looking for. Awesome. Let's jump into the color step. So, create a new layer and bring it under the sketch layer. Then we're going to add color fill using the bucket paint tool and create a base, base background. Now we're going to create a new layer that will put above the color fill in order to paint each section of the character. Set the brush opacity to 100% and pick your preferred colors to fill in each section. To modify the color, press Ctrl U to open up the color picker. There you can change the saturation or hue or, or brightness. Using the color picker is quite helpful in this case because we are, going, we are working on a single layer. If you want to modify colors separately, you need to work with independent layers. Guys, when selecting the color range you use for your character, make sure that colors you choose match. In our case, it's quite easy since they were lots of different green tones, which perfectly match. And also they are ginger haired a color that also fits in this color range. Now let's add shadows to our character. I'm applying them using a soft brush. So what you need to do is to create a new layer and put it above the color layer. And then create a clipping mask by pressing Alt. So press Alt and uh, click on the superior layer. Now select a darker tone for the shadow, in our case a reddish tone. Then apply the shadow in those darker areas. And after that we reduce the opacity. Create another layer where we'll be inserting more shadows to improve the final illustration. By using a soft brush, we can clearly differentiate the color gradients. Make sure you use the same tools we are working with now when applying the shadows. N next, create a new layer and add a clipping mask as well to subordinate it to the rest. We're going to use it to add light, so pick a light and low saturated yellow and add the color wherever you want to create lighting effects. Then create another layer to add darker lighting effects. Just two or three light focus will be enough. Once you've finished applying the shadows and the lighting effects, let's create another layer above the sketch one, where we'll be adding details to the base color as well as marking our character's shapes and volumes.
will be still using a soft brush. In fact, it's one of the basic in Photoshop. At the top you'll find some circle-shaped brushes with gradients. Select one of them. Brush opacity will go from 40, 60 to 70 percent, depending on the area. This way we'll include in our illustration different color variations. Color variations will depend on the shadows and lighting effects. Let me explain to you quickly how to work with color variation so that you can apply it to your own drawing. So, first of all, we need to insert a light focus. In our case, the light focus is at the top right. So we need to bear in mind that our character's face will be lighting up and, obviously, those areas where light doesn't fall will be darker. Thus, make sure to lighten up areas such as the bird, the nose, and right side, side of the face. On the left side, I applied more shadows since light doesn't reflect the. Also, we need to include the reflection of light. What is it? Well, it refers to the light which is reflected from other objects or from the background. In this case, the background will do. As it has a ochre tones, I'll use a similar tone to reflect the light. This time in the opposite direction, that's it, on the left. However, the reflected light mustn't be lighter than the real light focus. We could talk about two different areas, the shadowed area and the lightened area. So the area with the lights must be much brighter than the reflected light. Cool, so what else? Another thing we need to bear in mind are the materials. And it's not the same drawing metal as plastic. Metals are usually brighter in the middle and the sides are darker. On the contrary, Plastics behave differently. They are usually brighter in the sides and darker in the middle. It's essential you pay attention to it when drawing materials. What about the rest of materials such as the foam, the hair, the beer? Well, you can also look for references on the internet or check other artists' work to see how they made it. However, well, I recommend you to use real references so you can find you can find them around you. So materials are as real as possible. Textures are also a very important aspect when it, it comes to illustrations, and not all textures are the same. It's not the same drawing jelly, paper, metal, or leather. Well, let's have a look at the beer on the floor. As you can see, it reflects the objects above it. This reflection happens with all liquids. So it's very important that you bear it in mind so that you can reflect it properly. Mm, what else? Well, at this point of the illustration process, we can delimit and modify the outline of the drawing. For example, the bird's outline. Pay attention to it since the outline needs to be clearly defined, so the silhouette can be appreciated. This way we'll di direct attention to the main and most important parts of the drawing. Let's add the final touches. First, we'll improve the beer's foam so that it looks like real beer head. I'll focus on the beer coming out of the beer. 
Then I'm going to work a little bit on the hair. To properly color, color the hair, we need to bear in mind that it should be included in layers. What does it mean? We'll separate the hair in different sections, although it seems cartoonish. How are we going to add lighting effects to the bird? Pretty easy. When working with hair, it's important to add color following the hair line. If there are different layers, like in this case, where there is a main section and another layer under it, we can apply lighting effects to those parts, although it's up to you. However, not all artists work on the hair in the same way. So if you're not really sure about how to make it, have a look at other artists' work to see how they apply lighting effects to birds. But you need to bear in mind the light source, since lights will be different depending on it. So it's essential you study the scene's lighting beforehand, okay? Once our illustration is almost finished, it's, it's important we spot those areas we want to correct since, since it's a, the right moment to introduce any change. In my case, I'll change the left hand by scaling it up since it was smaller than the, the other hand. Thus, use the lesser tool to select the area you want to modify and then transform. When you finish it, apply the lights and shadows to cover up the modification. Let's add something cool to the background to make it stand out. Select the gradient tool and choose a darker tone. Apply a linear gradient from top to bottom. As you can see, there are certain areas of the background that are still visible after removing the background. So we need to correct it. To do so, enable all the layers containing color and erase those areas with flat colors on the background. We are sort of cleaning up our illustration to get a professional result. Guys, most importantly, don't forget signing your illustration. Your signature should be representative, so put it in a visible place and use an appropriate tone. For example, here. So our St. Patrick's illustration is finished. This is our leprechaun ready for drinking beer. I really hope that you found it useful and that you enjoyed a lot with this tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye.